Casey, Ronnie, Tom, Anthony, and Jinx, aren't they amazing? Uh, they every, every week get up and give their, their talent to us, and it becomes a gift. And that's what I believe happens as we serve. You know, when, when God puts talents in his people and we use those talents for his glory, it becomes a gift to the world. Amen? And so here's a, here's a really amazing thing is a lot of people, they're missing out on gifts every Sunday because they don't get to come and be a part, but we get to come and be a part of it. Amen? And so what a blessing. We're glad that you chose to come and worship with us at Midland Heights. Some of you, that this may be your first Sunday. I'm Dan. I'm the pastor here. I've been here six years, and uh, I plan on, I plan on being here. I plan on being here many more. So you know, it, but but I'm leaving all that up to God because He's in charge of of, of who I am. And so, hey, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, till I get Sue's age, we won't tell you how old she is. Though, okay. Uh, <laughs> But we're excited that you're here. We're excited about what God is doing, and, he, and there's opportunity for here, you to, hear, to serve here. We have a close, uh, closet that's open on Saturdays that's helping so many families every month. Shirley's a part of that. They continue to need help. Saturdays are amazing. We fed over 200 people here yesterday, and uh, the group from Mount Olive Church came yesterday. They serve on the fourth Saturday. We serve on the third Saturday. If you're interested in serving meals and helping us cook or prepare or just hand them out, you can be a part of that. It, it, I, and I promise you this, you can come and serve, and you will leave way more blessed than anything you, than anything you gave away. Okay, there is just something that happens when we serve out of uh, an idea that we're not getting nothing back and no expectations. When we get to serve, it is amazing. So we don't care who you are, what you've done, what has happened. What we believe here is that God is caring about your future, not your past. And we've all made mistakes in our past. We're not here to point anything out. What we're here to do is to grow into the future and the promises that God has today. And he's got some big promises and they're amazing. And he's wanting to show us some today. And so the several weeks we've been in this series called Resolve. And this is actually the last week of the series. And so the first week we talked about readiness over happiness. God wants us to be ready. He, everything in life isn't always going to make us happy. There's going to be things that's going to hurt us. or There's going to be challenges in our life. But God is preparing us to be ready one day when we stand before the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We will have accomplished the very task that he has purposed us for. Amen? And so he's calling us to be ready, not always to be happy. I believe that we can have great joy in any storm. And joy and happiness are two different things, amen? I believe we can always be, have joy. We may not always be happy. And so the second week I talked about financially free families. When we're not, when we're not uh, burdened with debt, we're not burdened with so many things, so many bills and things like that, then we can do things for God's glory that we may not do otherwise. I talked about how God lever wants us to leverage our lives for, for his advancement, to make a difference in people's lives. And I believe that we, if we can teach the younger generation not to use debt but to pay for things uh, when they have the money or when they have made uh, something that they've earned, then it will free them to do things and live out their purpose for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And that's a challenging thing because I I'm here to tell you I still have debt, okay? The key is that we focus our energy to work to a way and to a place to get out of that so that we can leverage the blessings God puts in our lives every day for his good. So it doesn't happen overnight, but we can work on it overnight and we can get there one day. Amen? And so the Resolve 3, last, or week before last, I talked about faith on fire. Faith on fire. We need to let people know. We need to let our kids know it is a joy to serve the Lord it is a joy to know him intimately and have a relationship with him and we need to let him know what a joy it is to come together as the body of, of Christ as his church and to see his power and his transform, uh, transformative power work in each of our lives and so what a joy it is to serve God and, and it's more than a thrill I'm going to tell you when I, when I first got involved in church I thought oh no my life is fixing to get boring and I don't know if you've ever thought that. That's just, this is just my story. I thought it's boring. You know, it's going to be boring. It is quite different. God, God has just done things in my life every day of my life that it's a thrill to serve the Lord. It's, it's always a challenge because without the challenge, I don't need him. If I'm able to accomplish the things day to day by myself, then I don't need God's power. 
And God is always calling me to do things that require faith and require his power. Amen? And so here we are today. We're going to talk about uh, the very last message today. We're going to talk about intentional giving. Intentional giving, even when it hurts. And, and so, you know, over the last few weeks we talked about we give them praise that they don't deserve. Our kids and, and maybe in society we give them praise that they don't deserve or we give them things that they didn't earn or we give them freedoms that they can't handle. And so there has to be a balance in our life. Amen? Say balance. Tap someone on the shoulder and say balance. Now tell them, now tap someone on the shoulder and say, you need balance. Now this time, now, now this time, tap yourself on the shoulder and say, even you need balance. Balance. And so intentional giving, I could teach you about giving. I could tell you to give it all away. But if you gave it all away today, what would you have tomorrow? And I believe that God is at work in our life to be good stewards and to use his resources to make a difference on this planet, to make a difference in this community, to make a difference in our families' lives. And so we, we have to understand that when we give praise that, that people don't deserve or we give them things that they don't earn or if we give them freedoms that they can't handle, we are enabling to live a life not victorious in God's kingdom. And we are calling people, I believe God is calling people to live victorious in his kingdom. Amen? And I want to live victorious. And, and, and the truth is I don't live there every day, but I'm striving to. I'm striving to. And so as we look at this, we're going to... Uh, look at a scripture Deuteronomy 6 4 and 9 and it'll be on the screen if you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me there Deuteronomy chapter 6 verses 4 and 9 and it says this hear O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength these commandments that I give you today are to be on your heart to impress them on your children talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up, tie them as a symbol on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your house and on the gates. And so this is a scripture from the Old Testament, but I believe it speaks to us today. And so let me ask you a question. How does it speak to us as people today? See, this is the part where y'all get involved. <laughs> How would this scripture speak to us today? Abide by the commandments, okay? To abide to, what do you think God's trying to teach his people through, this, through these words? To teach others, to practice, someone said, what did you say? In everything we do, we should, we should do it for God. And so, because, you know, he starts out there, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And that's a challenge for each of us, isn't it? It's a challenge in the day to do those things, but God is calling us to meet his challenge. And it's really interesting because in and through challenges in our day, what happens is that people can hurt us. People can say things that hurt our feelings. People, we, can, we can be living out God's calling, and our friends or our family can look at that and think, man, what has happened to my, to my son or my daughter or my whatever? And so if we're going to intentionally give, what I want to tell you today is that every opportunity that someone hurts you, that steps on your feelings, that breaks your heart, every opportunity is a gauge to see where you're at spiritually. Every opportunity when someone has done something to harm you and, and to take you out of the event and, and, to, and to challenge you because they hurt your feelings, and you, what do we want to do when someone hurts you? retaliate I mean I'm I'm kind of a big guy and if someone yep yep and so if someone hurts me if someone offends me what do I want to do I mean come on and that's and that's that's initially can be my thought but I'm here to tell you God is calling us to live outside of our initial thoughts amen and so if we're going to intentionally give when it hurts, we need to realize that every opportunity our feelings get hurt is a test, I believe, from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to see where our resolve, to see where our integrity is, to see what we're made of in Him. Amen? 
And I believe that will challenge our hearts and challenge us at the very core of who we are because the initial feeling is, huh, come on, let's fight. Come on, you want to do this? I got something for you. You want to hurt me? I can hurt you back. But I'm here, to, I'm here to tell you, church, if we're living in that mindset, if we're living in that way, we're not living in the kingdom of God and his promises. Amen? Now, I'd, I, I cannot stand someone that goes around and hurts people. I mean, I really feel like part of my ministry, part of, part of what God has called me to do is to, is to help people understand when they're hurting people because some people hurt people and they don't even know it. And I can see it very clear. Do you want to know why? Because I've been one of them. And I continue to battle that. Because I have an idea, and if I see my idea should be this way, and someone's not listening or it's not going my way, I want to help you to see it my way. (laughs) And manipulation and control are not from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because he gave us free will as an example. He gave us free will. Every day to make a better choice. I don't care what has happened to you in your life up to this point. I know God cares. But I'm here to tell you, I know this, that whatever has happened to you today is a new day. It's a new beginning. You have a new opportunity to live differently than you lived at any point of your life today. Because God's calling you to that. He's calling you to a place of complete dependence to give your whole heart, your whole mind, your whole soul, all your strength to Him like you've never done it before. Give it all to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so there's three things that we have to do to give the next generation, to make an impact, three things to give the next generation uh, 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 an idea who the King of Kings is and the plan that God has for them. There's three three ideas that I want to share with you today. And so the first is this, is we need to give them a community worth having. Amen? A community worth having. And so we see in the scripture, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Here's the thing, the example is already set before us. God is in community. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune God, the God that created the heavens and the earth always has been and always will be in community. And he sets up this example for us to interact just as the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are one and they act as one, they're also different. And just as we have come here, we're all different. And we've come here hopefully with one mission. We're like-minded. We want to grow. We want to learn. We want to celebrate who God has made us to be. No one in here is perfect. So we're all on a level playing ground. Amen? No one in here is perfect. And so we should give our kids a community worth celebrating and having. And so this past Sunday, I wasn't here. Aaron preached for me. Where is Aaron at? He was here. There he is. Get, y'all give him a hand clap for last Sunday. I know he did an awesome job. As I shared two weeks ago, Aaron is appointed here as associate pastor. And so anything y'all need done, he's the man to go to. <laughs> he, <laughs> no, we're excited. We're excited for the ministry that God's, uh, I mean, we're all part of this ministry. We're excited about it. And so when I was gone to conference, uh, one of, we, I got to hear two dynamic speakers. One of them was Adam Hamilton, and he was a, a pastor that started a new church. His DS said, we believe you can start a new church, and we want you to do it, and here's $3,000, and, and uh, go do it. You know? And we're thinking, man, $3,000, I mean, that's a lot to some, not a lot to others, but I'm going to tell you, it's not a lot to start a new church with. But what was interesting is they decided to start the church in a funeral home. Because they gave him free rent. <laughs> and they tra- called the church the Church of the Resurrection. And it is now the largest United Methodist Church in America. Wow. 
But he said two, two years, two or three years into leading this church and as growed as 150, 200 people were coming and attending, they were building community, they were building relationships, they were building trust within, within each other's lives that they had outgrown the facility and they were going to look to buy, buy a new building or, or look to, to do something different. And they had, they had found two options. And, and, they, and so he shared the two options that they looked at. The first option was to uh, buy a building two, two miles down the road that was an old church that had died and they had shut the doors and they could buy this old building they had a sanctuary that seat 200 and they had uh, uh, a fellowship hall and they had all, you know everything that they need to have church they had or the other option was to go to the uh, there was an elementary school close by and they could meet in the gym and they could set up church every morning and tear down church every Sunday evening and, and uh, there was a lot of work and labor intensity and they they went and they looked at both locations and the group met and they prayed about it and they agreed they wanted the church because why? It was already set up. It'd be easy. I mean, it just makes sense. But he said that night as he went home and he prayed about it, God told him, said, if you move into that church, y'all will never grow. And so he called each one that had went and looked at the two locations. He called and he communicated and he said, you know what, if we do this, I, think we're I feel like we're making the wrong mistake. And they said, why? I mean, it's set up. We don't, we don't have to work as hard. And he said, because if we do this, it's what will make us comfortable. And we're not here to make our lives more comfortable. We're here to intentionally give and make sacrifices. And if it takes getting up, and setting up church on Sunday morning, if it takes doing these things to reach more people, then we'll do it. And they chose to go and meet in the gym. And today, it's the largest church in America because of that decision. Had they not made that decision, what do you think would have happened? They would probably still be where they're at. Brothers and sisters, I, I believe God is calling us to a, a community that's worth having, but I'm here to tell you it goes beyond this building. God is calling us to minister in this community beyond this building. He's calling us to be the hands and feet. I, I, I've said it more and more in my life, my own personal life. I'm not the pastor of Midland Heights Church. I'm the pastor of this community. And I'm not taking anything away from any other pastors. They're doing amazing work, and God is there too. But God is calling us to be more than a pastor or more than a fellowship inside these walls. Amen? We're the church that should go beyond the walls. So the second thing is this, is we have to have a standard worth achieving. A standard worth achieving. And we see it says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all of your what? Strength. All these things. And I believe it takes heart, it takes soul, it takes strength. To not react when someone has hurt you. I believe we have to call ourselves right in the check when someone is lashed out, when something is hurt, when our feelings feel about this tall and someone's putting their foot on there and grinding that foot. I mean, you just feel like, you know what? I can't take this no more. I believe that's when God calls us to intentionally give. You see, that situation is an opportunity for giving into that person's life. If they're ever going to see the King of Kings and the glory of God in your life, what greater opportunity than when they come and they stomp on your feelings, they cross the boundary for you to show them what it means to give, to really give, than when they have come and hurt you. Now, I know that is a challenge. I know it's, I know, I, I see what, it, what the challenge is. But I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, with God, all things are possible. Amen? With God, all things are possible. There is a standard that is worth achieving. Do you know what the gold standard, kind of the gold standard in church is that we should be living by? In the book of Acts, it said that the people broke bread. We're about to break bread down here in a minute. We're living up to the standard. Amen? We're going to eat together. I'm just telling you, God's there. When we fellowship down there, God's going to be there in a different way than even right here. Hallelujah, someone said. Now he's preaching. I'm telling you. 
But the gold standard, it says in Acts, they broke bread and it said that God added to their numbers daily. That God added to their numbers daily. You know what? We have church right here on Sunday morning and there's new people that come in and they visit. But I'm here, I'm here to tell you the gold standard is for every day of the week that we be adding numbers. Can you, can, you, can you imagine what the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords could do through this body when we broke bread, when we fellowship, when we learned to trust each other in such a way that we had one common mission, one common purpose? Amen? What glory could be revealed to people's lives? So there is a standard, and so I want to use this analogy. I read the story. is about a man that had an, a large aquarium, and he had a shark. And in that, in that large aquarium with his shark, he, what he did is he went and bought some shark bait. What did they use for shark bait? Chum. What else? They use other things. Other fish. Okay. Like minnows or something like that. Okay. And so what he did is he actually went and got some live fish, and he put it in because he, w he was trying something. And so he dumped the minnows in there, and you know what the shark did? What did he do? He ate them as fast as he could. And so just a second, he ate them all. And then, and then what he did is he took a piece of plexiglass and divided the shark tank and then dumped the live fish in there. What did the shark do? He bumped his head. I mean, he just kept bumping his head trying to get it. And about two minutes, three minutes into it, guess what happened? He stopped. He got tired of, of beating his head. So he pulled the plexiglass out, and every day for a week, he dumped the live fish in there. The shark would eat him up. Then he'd put the plexiglass in there, and he'd put the uh, fish back in there, and the shark would beat his head. And then at the end of the week, he just simply put the fish in there and removed the plexiglass. You know what the shark did? Just swum right along with the other fish. And I share that with you this morning because I believe that in our lives there are times when we just beat our heads and beat our heads and beat our heads. We're looking for spiritual breakthrough. We're looking for something to grow in us, something to happen in our kids' life, something to change in our job, something to change in our marriage, something to change in our finances. And we get to the place where we, we start to believe that something's not going to change. And I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, it can change today for your life. There's a standard that's worth living for, and I believe that life change can happen in a moment when we just become willing to trust God with our whole life, with our whole heart, with our whole being. Amen? God is calling us to that place. And so there's one last thought that I want to share with you, and then we're going to eat. We should share with the younger generation, not just a community worth having, not just a standard worth achieving, but the third thing, a faith worth reproducing. We should live out our faith before our, our children. Impress this on your children. Talk about this when you sit at home and when you talk and, or when you walk along the road and when you lie down and when you get up. And so this one last story I want to share with you as the worship team comes up. As this lady, she, she would go jog in the park every day. And as she'd go jog, she would see an older lady on, on Fridays down by this little pool of water. And so every, every day she'd jog, but every Friday she'd see this old lady. And she got really curious. And so one, this particular Friday, she decided to walk down there close to this older lady and see what she was doing. And as she got closer, she saw that this lady had a cage, and inside the cage was three turtles. And as she got a little closer, she saw the lady reach in and get one of the turtles out, and she had a bucket of water and a sponge, and she simply took that sponge and she would wipe the turtle shell. And there would be algae or scum or whatever on the shell and she'd wipe it off and then she'd let it back go. And this lady was curious, why would anybody go and clean off a turtle shell? And as she walked down there and she asked the lady, she said, what are you doing? And she says, well, every Friday I come down here at this time and I get uh, a bucket of water and I have a sponge and I'm wiping the scum and the algae off this turtle shell. I see that you're doing that, but why? Well, the reason why is because if a turtle doesn't lay in the sun during the day and their body temperature heat up a certain amount, they cannot swim effectively 
in the waters. And they eat when they swim down in the water. And they can only go so far into the water when their body temperature is heated up. So I simply come down here and remove the algae and the scum from their shell so when they lay in the sun, their body heats up. And then they can go about their day and have freedom in their day. Now church, I believe that is an awesome analogy for our lives. Because a long time ago, the scripture says that we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. A long time ago, someone looked at my life. There was a man that looked at my life and he said, You, what about you being a pastor one day? He saw something in me that I could have never seen. I mean, matter of fact, when he said it, I thought the man was nuts. He said, you, what about you? He saw something. He was, in in a way, he was taking a bucket of water and a sponge, and he was wiping off, really, the scum and the algae that I had created in my life. And he was wiping it off. And what I'm here to tell you is this. What happened is through that relationship, he introduced me to my Father in heaven, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you know what I heard from him? You know what God told me? He said, you are worth it. You are worth it. You are worth everything that I am doing on this planet. You are worth my son going to the cross and laying down his life for you. You were worth that, Dan. And I had never seen worth in me until someone seen it first and revealed it to me. Therefore, God came along in that story and he revealed to me, and I believe he's slowly taking a sponge and he's getting the scum and the algae off of me so that I can live. Amen?